Hey, oh, that's better. Hey, everybody. This is going to be a general video. I'm almost done with the Tyranids Codex, so this is a general video on building armies. How do I design an army list? Probably the most common question anybody can ask in 40K is, what army do I choose? Why do I choose it? How do I know if I have a good army list or a bad army list? I'm going to help you answer that question the way I answer that question. Now, as I said, I've been playing 40K for about since 92, pretty much. Uh, obviously, there's breaks, but yeah, that's, that's, that's when I first bought my figures, so I'm going to say that's when I started playing. And this is how I design my armies. First, I don't care about points. What? Yes, I don't care about points. I see video after video, discussion after discussion of people saying, oh, huh, this figure, it's, um, hmm, it's up, went up by five points, down by five points, sideways by five points, in and out by five points. Who cares? Where... Where's your reference point to know if that's good or bad? I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means to have gone up or down. Here's what I do. I start, and I think everybody should, with a strategy. What do you want your army to do? In this case, my series on, uh, on Tyranids, I start with a concept. First... I want a control infiltration slash deep striking army, not entirely deep striking army, and that is my strategy. What is the basis of that strategy? To get across the table without walking. Boom, you have a concept. You then start building from that concept. Let's look at what units can do that. Here's a deep striking unit. It can do that. Here's an infiltrating unit. It can do that. Here are units that can be upgraded with deep striking or outflanking. Uh, you make a list of all those units that have the ability to do and add to the strategy that you want to build. And that's your core. You then start looking at your HQs. Okay, now how do I want the leadership of this army list to work? What do I want my HQ to do? Well, what does an HQ do? An HQ leads. Contrary to popular belief, it is not simply an independent character who's melee and with cheesy gear. No, it's supposed to lead. What does that mean, lead? It means it's supposed to have abilities that somehow adds to the ability and the efficiency of your army. How does it do that? Then the gear comes into play. Look for the weaknesses in your army. How can those weaknesses be mitigated by some ability of the HQ unit. So for example, in my situation, I had an army where I want most of my people to come in on turn two. Okay, what are the weaknesses of doing that? I have to make reserve rolls. Okay, what can my HQ units do to mitigate that weakness? Oh, look, well, there's a Swarm Lord. He gives a plus one to my reserve rolls. Boom, a mitigation. Oh, well, it's not an HQ unit, but here's a, a fortification. It has a comms relay. It allows me to re-roll failed reserve checks. That's another mitigation. You look for the weaknesses in your army and you start taking care of them. You start getting rid of them. That's how you start planning your army unit. Now let's go into another direction. What do the elites do? Elites are, again, they typically are specialized units that once again 
tend to be good at a very specific role in your army. Well, once you know what you want your army to do, you can start looking at the specialized roles that elites would have. Or So I start saying, okay, let's see. What do the elites do? Ah, we got lictors. Why are lictors good? Well, because I'm a deep striking infiltrating unit. How are they helpful? Well, they get rid of deviation from deep striking units. Ah, that's probably then more applicable to my strategy than an exocrine. Yes, the exocrine is a brilliant, great unit, wonderful at killing things. It's just not a part of my strategy. So it, 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 this doesn't come into play. For now, put it aside. Put the distractions aside. I like lictors. How many lictors should I have? How should I look them? Do they come up with upgrades? Is there some other pairing with lictors, say, with my HQ units that can make a nice killer combo? Oh, wait, there is. He's called a Death Leaper. Hmm. Wow. Maybe they work together somehow. Maybe Games Workshop is not just a collection of smegheads, you know, sitting around drinking pints at Bugman's, just trying to make money off of you. Perhaps that is not accurate. So, I say, wow, okay, uh, Death Leaper, Lictors, those are good. Um, there, there's something here. There's something I can work with here. There's some strategy. There's some combination that I can probably put together with here. Uh, and then you build on it from there. Now, in the Tyranid army, there's not too many more with the, um, with the infiltrating and deep striking as much. So I move on to troop choices. Why do I go to troop choices after that? Because I need two troop choices. Oh, let's look at my troop choices. What troop choices fit into the idea that I have so far? Well, we got gene stealers. That's cool. They infiltrate. That fits with that. Is there anything that deep strikes? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, look. Wow. I can make Ripper Swarms Deep Strike as an upgrade. Now that's interesting. That fits. That's in the theme of my strategy. Maybe I should see if there's a combination that works with them and with Gene Stealers and with Lictors and with Death Leaper and a Swarm Lord maybe. And you get the thread. You see what I'm saying? You build a thread that runs through your entire army. When you have that, when you have that focus of what you want to do, of how you want to play, you can keep building your army. Uh, okay, so let's let's move on to fast attack. Well, fast attack have, that has everybody interesting. Everybody is deep striking. Some are just flying. Okay, that's true, but uh, some are deep striking. So let's just get to the deep striking. Oh, well, look, here's here's uh, here's the ball lock. That's a cool unit, um, and it seems almost made the deep strike. Here's another unit that makes tunnels. Okay, so let's compare them. Which one is more useful to me? Well, tunnels is a little more delayed. You know, they really won't come into play until uh, turn three. And my whole point now is when I've been using the lictors and 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 the death leaper is to stop deviation and to really get in as fast as possible and to increase my the chances of my reserves coming in as fast as possible. So probably I don't want something that really waits until turn three before it comes useful. Um, so I'm, I'm, I look more at the Molochs. Okay. Boom. That's your heavy support. Did I say fast attack before? Sorry. That's your heavy support. Uh, and and why take why just take one? I mean, is there anything else really better? Uh, not really. You know, I like my terror from below. That's freaking awesome. I mean, at first I thought I want more tunnels, but it. Uh, um, Experiments and games have showed me, like I said, eh, turn three is just really too long for me. And secondly, what's really the point of a tunnel except to bring another unit in? And I said, well, I want my units in as fast as possible, and if I can get them in on turn two, then why do I need a tool that gets them in on turn three? When I can have a tool that will blow things up and kill things on turn two. Namely, yes, the terror from below. So I pretty much switched over to all Molochs. Now I went off to fast attack, usually the least used 
of the Tyranid armies, but uh, let's see. Who's deep striking in there? Wow. Spore mines deep strike. That that's sweet. Hey, hey, look. Ravners. They deep strike. They kind of make their own tunnel. I uh, I could bring them in. Um and boom. That's more. Now I went with spore mines over Ravners. Why? Well, in this case it did come down to a point thing. Uh because I I I don't have any Ravner models. I did I've never used really Ravners before. Sorry. But you know what? I have lots of pebbles. <laughs> lots of little multicolored pebbles that I have at the bottom of a fish tank. And I glued those onto stands. And suddenly, I have three full-strength deep-striking spore mine models. And they did strength 9 slash 10 attacks. And they deep-strike. And they work perfectly well with my Lictor strategy and bringing them down right on top of models that I want to bring them down on. Boom. I also started looking then at the um, Harpy. That was another way to bring them in. But I decided, no, that's a little bit too much of a deviation, too much of a flying army motif more than a just, I want to bring these things down on people's head right now on turn two. Motif. So then you just go on to the next one. Okay. Heavy support. Hmm. No, I already talked about that. Sorry. <clears throat> so so that's it. There you go. I worked through the entire process of creating my army in 10 minutes. And next I'm going to work on Nidzillas. Um, but it's going to be the same process, basically, just different units. That is how I build an army. That is how I suggest you build an army. That is how you get rid of this five points up, five point down. Um, what about this army list? Is it useful? Is it competitive? Is it non-competitive? How can you possibly ask that question without first asking the person, you know, what is your strategy here? And what was your thinking as you went through all the choices? And well, basically when you played it, does it work? I've gone over a little long. I hope you understand this. I hope you like it. I'll be bringing more down there and then dealing with all of the army lists now and how to do that. Talk to you next time. Enjoy.